Hey guys. So this is my synthetic rig routine. Little get ready with me. And this is what kind of like one of my first get ready with me videos. So it's taken me a while to edit all this, but I'm really happy for things to finally be panning out. So this is a synthetic wig I got from Little Five Points. Um, this is probably about a good four months after I've had it. It's a little dry and you know every so often just needs a little more maintenance than just combing it out. And so I'm just going to show you guys the process I do to make that happen. <coughs> um, so I've cut these bangs myself, the bangs didn't come like this, but um, first we're just going to take this wig off here, and we're going to take these braids out, well, they're actually flat twist, check out that new growth, I find that having my hair in flat twist is easier, one, because I'm not the best at braiding, but also, um, it's just easier, and it's, I don't know, I don't feel my hair is not that thick, so I don't really need a lot to keep it down and flat underneath the wig. And once you've taken out your hair, like I've always just kind of stimulated and like spread it apart, spread the strands apart, just kind of letting the scalp breathe. And I've had these braids in for about a week and a half, so. Each time I do this, I do a deep conditioning, which you're about to see that process. Um, and so it kind of keeps my hair saturated underneath the wig. <clears throat> so I'm just uh, now I'm just stimulating my hair, spreading it, checking out the new growth that I have. So probably got a good like half inch in the group. Each time I do this, I get about a half inch or more. And honestly, this has helped me grow my hair back. After years of unhealthily dyeing it, you know, I used to really be crazy with the dyes because I thought that since I was natural, I could just like, I could just dye my hair all willy nilly because I was like, I'm moisturizing it. If it turns out I was not using the right process or moisturizing it enough. And also, you know, just taking a look at, like, my texture, it's not, I don't know if it's 4C or not, but I don't think it is. Um, it's just kind of lays down, and it's very, I have low density hair, so it's not that my hair is unhealthy and thin, it's just, it's just the way it is. <laughs> so I just got done washing my hair. And I use apple cider vinegar to wash my hair. It is the number one product for body care, I think. It kills germs and restores nutrients both to your hair and body. So we're going to add this Atomy Hair Herbal Cream to my hair. Where it can get all through generally just to keep the general moisture there as I work with it. And we're going to split it in half. I'm oh, like, well, not yet, I'm sorry. Now we're going to add this wild growth oil, which does, I think, work. I just put it to my scalp and my edges, and try to just make sure it's evenly coated each part of my scalp so I get even growth. I don't care about my hair being even, but I do care about them. And now this is a cream and nature cream, and I'm just uh, putting it right on my hair. And this is, a, this is just the beginning, like, this is just the basis of moisture. Because um, I realize over time that it's best to really saturate the hair, especially if you have afro hair. So I'm finger parting it right down the middle. I'm going to use this detangler here and also this flat brush on the other side just to test and see how it is. 
I used to be afraid to use it on my hair, but I've seen so many natural hair channels that use it. And it uses African healing oil, oil with a Y, and some shea butter. I'm just adding that to one half of my hair in quarter sections. And now Pine Tar. This is an interesting product. Um, I really think that it does good for coating the hair. And as I feel like our hair being coated is just the best thing. Kind of like that um, Tribe and Chat. They have that special like coating that they do on their hair. It's almost like clay. And I twist it all the way through my hair to make sure each strand is completely covered and saturated. And now the detangling. <laughs> <clears throat> I do really like this detangling brush because it just works so well. Now I start from the ends and work my way up to the roots. You could do this with a pick, but I, I also, I think it's because my hair is so thin, it's really easy to do with this. But with my fiance, I have to use a hair pick um, first before going straight into this. But with my hair, I can just go straight in. Look at that stretch curl pop. I love that. So now is the flat twisting part. You're just going to take a piece of hair in the front. Wow, look at that. It's so long. I'm just admiring the curls right now at this point. <laughs> We're just going to take these two strands right here and do a two strand twist. Kind of starting close to the root and working our way down, grabbing hair all the way to we get to the back of the hair, head, you know. And it's pretty, um, it's like the easiest thing to do. If you don't know how to cornrow, I recommend flat twist because it's just, it's way faster too. And we're just going to do the same to the other side as well. I do want to get my ends, like, um, clipped or whatever, but I'm just nervous about going. I just need to go to the right person. Because I don't like my hair being even, you know, like I don't care about it being like oh, it's all one length. I would rather it just be healthy. So like if I get my hair cut, I would rather them just like trim off whatever's unhealthy and leave it at that. Like don't try to make it all even, just cut whatever's unhealthy. And that's like a hard thing for some hairstylists to understand. And I just, so I don't know, I just been waiting it out. And just taking care of my hair as much as I can. But I do think that a trim would help <clears throat> with a little bit of length retention. As you can see, the flat brush works pretty well at detangling. Um, It actually is working on my hair. I used to be ignorant, and I used to call this the white girl brush until I started watching Brad Mondo videos. And I saw him call it a flat brush, and I was like, oh... That's what it's called. So I was just running through with the other detangler just to check and see if it's the same type of detangler, and it was. So now I'm beginning flat twisting this side. I'm just grabbing the hair as I go, twisting two strand twist all the way back. And I try to just get this as flat to my scalp as possible. That way I can tell if there's new growth. And also, I don't want it bumpy underneath the wig if it dry. Tuck in the little braid in the back. You see, I'm just connect those two twists with the braid. Make sure my scalp is nicely saturated. Wig cap time. Like, I don't wear wig caps all the time. But, you know, if I feel like, you know, just covering my head more or just having more security or my hair is super laid underneath... I'll wear one, but it's not like a rule for me or anything. So I'm just kind of brushing out my wig with the residue moisturizer that's on the flat brush because, you know, I don't want to over moisturize the hair because it is straight hair. And if it's straight, when you over moisturize it, it just clumps together in this really weird way. So I'm not trying to have that. So I'm just uh, detangling what I have. Freshen it out. And like sometimes if I'm in a rush, honestly, this is all I would do to the wig. Just brush it out really good with some moisturizer and like 
kind of just go. But this has gotten to a point where it's a little too stiff for me. As you can see, when I bend my head down, the hair doesn't flow with me. So, adding the moisturizer does help, in a sense. A little. <clears throat> but now, we definitely just need to straighten it. So, we're just going through with the comb. Like, you know. And honestly, keep your heat super freaking low. This is a synthetic wig. As you see, I'm using the combing process of hmm, putting our comb through first, making sure the section is detangled, and then um, following it with the flat iron. And I'm not staying on too long at one part, I'm just doing what I need to do and brushing it down, you know? Like, I'm just going section by section. And this part may not be in perfect order because I was having a lot of complications editing, okay? This is my first, like, I had a lot of footage to sift through for this. So, excuse if it doesn't chronologically make sense visually, but trust me, this is, like, the work I've done in order to get this wig to look like this. And honestly, like, this is, I don't know, I just like to prove to people that you can make a synthetic cheap wig work and look reasonable on you. Like, it doesn't have to look like it's a cheap wig, you know. It doesn't have to just be all tangled and clumped up. You can do things to it. You just have to know what heats to work at, how much moisture the hair needs, and how to detangle it with with that, um keeping the integrity of the strand. <laughs> and I'm not a professional, so like, don't quote me on this stuff. But like, I just this is just the stuff that I do with my hair and with my wigs. If you like this content, please like and subscribe and turn your notification bell on because I would like that. <laughs> oh, looks like we're almost done. This is the finished result. It is falling down more, but I feel like it could use. Oh, wait, this is one of the out of place uh, parts don't know how to get rid of it some of the segments are just so tiny that like i can't do i can't single them out and click on them and delete them and when i try to zoom in i lose them so it's just i'm very much a rookie when it comes to video editing so this is the beginning part of when i was uh parting my hair to straighten it so this is the beginning results and this is the final results and um I went through a lot of, I went back and forth with my bang of what I wanted to do with it, whether I wanted to have it straight or bumped, so it's like, either way you would like to have your bangs, like, this is just what it would look like both ways, you know, so I had straightened it, and I was like, mm, maybe that's too straight, so now I'm adding a bump to it, I'm like, ooh, I started to like that shaping. I'm just holding it into place while it cools and letting it cool up in that overly bumped position so that it really maintains the shape. And just taking that small section and spreading it across the forehead. It's a much nicer bang to me suiting my face because it's not solid. I don't like solid bangs going across the forehead because it just hides the face a bit too much for me. And now we're putting on our headband. This is my magical headband that keeps all my wigs down. Well, this one in particular, just because I can get away with wearing it with it because it's yellow. But it holds it down. It's great because I perform a lot. Um, and when I perform, I jump a lot. I'm shaking my head sometimes and it'd be crazy if the wig just came off. Ah, uh, this is when I thought it was too bumped. So I tried to straighten the bang to see how it looked, if it was even straighter. So I was like, hmm, maybe that could work out better for me. And I do kind of like these results. I kind of like the way that looks. It is kind of like revising it. 
so it's more of a chic look maybe i don't know i i just really like bone straight you know i don't want it to be too bumpy like then it looks like i'm from like the 50s or something which is not a problem i guess if that's the look you're going for and i'm i don't know as you can look from my at my face you can see a little my discontent and i went back to the bumped bang but look at the flowingness of the hair it adds such a difference from in the beginning of the video when it was just stiff and right now i'm using this opportunity to pull out all the shedding from the entire wig i just pull and pull and like my thing is it's like you might as well get it before it falls out makeup time we're gonna start with a nice clean face I'm real up and close and personal with you guys now, suddenly. How you doing? And I always make sure I wipe my lips clean with the wipe just to get a little um exfoliation. Now I'm adding shea butter to my face, especially the parts where I'm going to be putting a lot of concealer. Because I just like to make sure that those parts are the smoothest and the makeup just glides on. And also it helps in creating that glow underneath all that makeup. And applying some to the brows. And now we're going to fill in the brows. And I really like to keep this super straight brow. Um, very Korean style makeup like. I find that Asian, more Asian, like, makeup suits my facial structure more than the, the um, American high arched brow. Uh, I've tried it. I used to do the American arched brow for most of my looks until I tried out this brow. And I've loved it so much that I've just kept doing my brows like this and I will forever keep my brows like this. And I'll make a video of how I arch my eyebrows and shape them with a razor in order to make this look more seamless and easy to replicate. Because um, I also have thin eyebrow hair too, so I like to make them look thicker. And right now I'm just lining them with concealer. Trying to be as precise as possible. I want them to be even with each other. I like symmetry in my face. I think I already have a pretty symmetrical face besides a few differences like eyebrow, um, eyebrow like the amount of hair on my eyebrows on each side or the mole that's on the left cheek that I, um, you know. But other than that, my face is pretty symmetrical, so I like to emulate that in the rest of my face. I'm just blending it in with a brush, and here's the palette I'm using. I'm with the band Essence and Spiritual Gangster. Gangster. Also, Essence is a European company. First, I'm going to use the Say My Name. And I'm just going to apply that to kind of like the crease, you know, and um, just kind of bringing it up towards the brow and blending it. Now, I love this brand of um, makeup because they are non-toxic. Next color I'm going to use is Wonderwall. Non-toxic and, like, there's no sulfates in it. And I'm really allergic to sulfates. So it's harder for me to find brands that have um, makeup that I'm just not going to break out to. So I really support this brand. You guys should check it out. Half the things that are elite that are legal to put into makeup here in America is illegal in Europe. So I think you are going to get a better product. So now I'm just adding the darker shade of purple um, to the crease to really define it. But having the, the my more reddish purple is really nice to add a warmness. And we're going to put the Where's My Mind shade right on the crease as kind of accurate as possible with this brush i honestly wish i had tinier brushes you know so i can really get precise but hey when with my growth you guys will see better tools so now i'm going to use a combination of she bougie and she bad from the spiritual gangster palette and they're very gold shimmery shiny 
um, shades and one's a pale gold and one's more of a warm darker gold so I mix them together to match my tone boom <laughs> eyeliner's done and as you can see I do like to do my bottom liner with a kind of it's drawn out from like I draw out the bottom lash line a little bit further than where it actually is to help widen my eyes even further even though I already have really big eyes I just like to accentuate that and adding whites there kind of really accentuate that I've seen makeup similar to this on uh, Shirleyza Moe's channel she's this uh, I think she's like Mongolian German she's like in Germany but she's Mongolian either way I'm, I'm obsessed with her channel I love how she does her makeup but I saw her do it like her eyes like this and I tried it on my eyes and I really like the results so it's just something I like to do now we're just kind of blending out some of where's my mind on the bottom um, lid you know bringing it down because I love an intense smoky eye I like intense makeup and it looks like we are putting on our liquid highlighter, blending it in as such. I love putting the liquid highlighter underneath the foundation because, I don't know, it comes off a bit pale on me sometimes. Oops. And I like to put it on in dots rather than just kind of streaking it on. And I connect the dots on the inside and then blend it from the outside in or like you know what I'm saying it's easy to like rub this stuff in this highlighter is also from Essence but it's really easy to uh, like rub it in and it not look like you have anything on so it's, it's a very specific padding motion that you have to use when you are blending in this highlighter completely blended now I'm gonna blend this side See how I'm connecting the dots and then going from the outside and then blending in. And that way it's still very pronounced um, on the center in which you want it to shine more. So but it's still a gradient. Out, yeah, I go to go on the other parts of my face rather than like doing you know, the part above my lip um, to help kind of find my cupid's bow, the forehead, the chin, the bridge and tip of the nose. And I take the residue and add it to uh, where the tiny arches in my eyebrows are. Now I only do it more towards the front facing. And now I add my foundation, which is Fit Me 355. I think it's coconut or whatever. Um, it's the shade that closest fits me. Um, it does. It does work I would say it works as a foundation I, I wouldn't say that it's exactly my skin tone um, but it, it does color me in and now we're adding concealer to the top part of my lip because I have darkness there I've always had darkness there used to be super insecure about it but now it's like whatever like I just deal with it I put makeup over it or I just don't wear makeup it's really not that big of a deal like the less you're insecure about something the less it will stand out to you i promise you <clears throat> so let's just uh you know adding that in there i'm adding the foundation in places where i would have shadow on my face as in like a contour and also in concealing parts that i um uh, i put concealer on for my uh eyebrows and i'm contouring my nose with it right now adding the shadow kind of um, following the bridge of the nose, kind of making that button nose appearance, which is my favorite type of nose. <laughs> and now here's the interesting part. Um, this is where the Igari factor comes in, or Igari. Uh, I always don't know how to pronounce certain things sometimes because I hear them pronounced multiple ways. But I'm just dotting in this long-lasting red liquid lipstick onto uh, my cheek line, following the nostrils, my nose, where they are. So it's in symmetry with that and the tip of my nose. 
I'm blending in the foundation first, then blend up into the blush and blend that out around the cheek. And then I blend my nose. I'm just going to blend in the same way on both sides. But, you know, it's, it's a nice little, it actually, like, kind of softens up in a really nice way, especially when it's, like, mixed with the foundation. I don't do this part on top of the foundation, but with the foundation. And now I'm darkening my mold because I always like that part of myself. And now lining my lips, kind of. Um, I only overline, like, a millimeter, you know what I'm saying? Very small. But I like the kind of lift it allows and like gives my lips. I feel like anything you want to achieve with like plastic surgery or um, lip injections you can do with um, makeup. Because I personally am too afraid to get needles in my face <laughs> or needles anywhere. And now we're doing one of our first coatings of mascara. Like we're going to be doing lots of coatings of mascara. So don't worry about that. And here's a Jeffree Star lipstick that I'm going to be using as a base. It is long lasting. I know. I did not buy these products. I did not buy the Jeffree Star lipstick. It was given to me as a gift. And I just been using it. It honestly is not that bad of a lipstick. But I do not support racism. So. I don't know. Yeah. But now I use Essence lipstick on top of that. I'm adding a red lipstick to the center of my lips to kind of make them come out more and more of a pouty kind of look. I always love the ombre kind of lip effect, but having that long-lasting lipstick underneath kind of helps um, solidify the rest of the lipstick and makes whatever I put on top of it kind of long-lasting. So I'm really happy at the results of what I have. And I believe the next step of what I'm going to do is use Don't Speak to set my blush. I'm adding that to the apples of my cheeks. I really like having the blush more so on the front part of my face rather than diagonal sides. Because it just looks way cuter to me. I love this look. This is another piece of Asian makeup that I added to my routine just because I feel like it suits my facial structure so much better than how I had been doing my makeup and I just love it I love it like just mixing in two different types of makeup styles with gothic and this cutesy igari igari kind of thing I, I love it and so now we're adding highlighter to the cheeks Adding in a gel um, eyebrow makeup, it's e.l.f. I believe, which is, uh, I really realized I forgot to put through this to the strands, but this is what gives like a three-dimensional effect. It's an e.l.f. eyebrow kit, and um, I use the powder first with the eyebrow brush that comes with the eyebrow pencil. I don't even use the tool that came with it anymore because I love using this process so much better and so now I just flicker it in and use the powder to kind of fill in the spaces in between the hairs and also kind of thicken the hairs and then I tap it on the um, gel part and like fill that in and I'm adding a I think this is my second layer of mascara if not third and here this is a little um, illusion trick if you want to kind of bring like make your lips look a little bit more puckered or uh, it's kind of like drawing out these lines from the corner of your lips and slightly up into like a kind of smile in a sense and it really helps with that lip injection look if that's what you're going for um, I just like to try things out so I'm just adding these brown lines with brown makeup and then I'm going to blend it in and you're going to see how it works. When my fiance saw this, he thought it was so creepy because it's just like how it just so seamlessly blended in. Like it looks funny right now, but oh wait and see. Ye of little faith. So we're just blending in this line right here. And it's just gonna lushify our lips even more. Boom. Like 
and I learned this type of blending from Michelle Fawn. Like, she taught me most of the things I know with when it comes to makeup. Um, so I've been watching her since I was like 16. But boom, like, that's how you get that look. And see, like, this is a super glowy look. Uh huh. Super glowy, puckered, like, just look. And, like, I'm actually about to perform when I, um, this night. And I decided to wear a green bendy to match the green in the shirt. So it's like I got a green purple thing going on. Setting spray. I love that part. And this is the full makeup look right here. We're going to add a fourth layer of mascara because this is when I did not have any um, false lashes. So I just, um, when I don't have any false lashes, I add multiple layers of mascara because I also have thin eyelashes like I have thin hair. So I really have to do a lot to accentuate it. And this is the final look. So, you know, this is my, uh, kind of a get ready with me. Um, if you like it, you know, leave a comment, subscribe. Um, I'm gonna finish out this video with a little ASMR. If you're into that, mukbang time. Please Just a little snack. Mm -hmm. I know in some ASMR mukbang videos, they whisper. But I know it creeps out some people, so since this is one of my first few videos doing ASMR, I have like one other, but since it is like one of the first ones, I won't whisper it, but I'm just not like accustomed to the whisper, but I will have videos that are, uh, I will have videos for people who like whispering during ASMR, but right now this will just be focusing on the pure sounds of the package and the food and you know just relax because I'm obsessed with ASMR and it's in one thing like watching it but it's a whole nother thing actually doing it and performing it um it's it's not only comforting to watch but it's comforting to do too. It's seasoned really well. It has really good flavor. I love the way the light shines through it.
honestly, this tastes so good.